Wearable gadgets are the hottest trend in consumer electronics right now, but why are so many of them stuck on the wrist? Now, obviously, the wrist makes sense for smartwatches, but when it comes to these little activity trackers, they're all focused on this little chunk of your body right here. There are some outliers. The company Misfit Technologies makes the Shine Tracker, which can be worn as a necklace or a wristband or a clasp and looks a lot prettier than some of the other ones. And then there's Fitbit, which has experimented with a clip, a wristband, and has a new partnership with Tory Burch so that your activity trackers can look like actual jewelry. But I asked myself, how did all these wearables end up on the wrist in the first place, and how can we break out of that design rut? For that, I turned to an expert. So I'm here with Robert Bruner, who's an industrial designer and the founding partner at Ammunition, which is a design studio here in San Francisco. So Robert, why are so many wearables, in my opinion, stuck on the wrist? It basically comes down to it's a safe place. People are very used to wearing things on their wrist. For the manufacturers making the stuff, it, it's safe for that exact reason too. They're not going out on a limb, right? You start trying to get people to wear something somewhere else they're not used to, you start to create barriers. Wearing things sort of signals either the tribe you belong to or the tribe you want to belong to, right, or aspire to. So, so for example, like the fuel band. Wearing a fuel band, whether you're an athlete or not, says, well, I am, right? I'm an athlete, I'm interested in my sports performance, so therefore I'm wearing it. And so that, that's a very strong psychological aspect to that product. And is that another positive about the wrist then, that it is visible and that you can sort of make that statement like, I am wearing a smart watch because this could not be any other watch. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. And I think, you know, to be honest, to me, most of the stuff that's out there to date, the, the functionality or usefulness is a little bit light, right? So I think a lot of people that are wearing them are kind of making that statement that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm forward thinking and I'm connected. So do you feel like this industry is finally starting to get off the wrist. First of all, wearables are in its infancy. You know, it is definitely 1.0, and, and, and I think you will start to see as the functionality gets more and more useful and more and more interesting showing up in different ways, which, you know, could be different places on the body. These are topics that nobody's dealt with before, right? right. Um, it is sort of the idea of the psychology of wearing things and, and fashion. None of these companies are used to that, so I think they're all starting to try and figure out, well, what do we do to get people to wear our things and feel good about wearing them and, and, and have that emotional component actually fuel the adoption? I have high hopes for wearable design. I do not think it's gonna be all wristbands all the time. For one thing, the tech that powers a lot of these gadgets is getting smaller and cheaper every day. Pretty soon, I imagine we'll have all kinds of tracking devices on us, ranging from our earrings to our earbuds to even our clothing. After that, it will just be all about you and your personal style. Fuel band, whoosh, jawbone up, elegant-ish. Pebble steel, your father's 70s Casio. 